Hi everyone! So before we let the video begin, I just wanted to say the entire point of this video was for me to read Defiant by Brandon Sanderson, which is the last book in his Skyward series. And for some reason, I started this video in I believe November and I just can't do it. I haven't had the urge to finish or read that book. Not that I even started, I haven't even started it yet. But the whole point of this video was for me to read that book and I just can't bring myself to do it. So for now, I'm just gonna edit this video as it is maybe later on when i make another one of these videos if i ever make another one of these videos i'll, I'll include defiant by brandon sanderson if i'm reading it around that time but right now i just really can't bring myself to re read that book so you're gonna have to settle for what's here and yeah hope you enjoy hi everyone welcome back to another video so i'm not in a reading slump but because i'm a big movie reader when i try to read one book and i'm just not into it i kind of just leave it lying around since i thought i'm not into the book i'm reading right now it's this one i've only gone 73 pages in and i've been stuck on 73 pages for the past two days and i'm just thinking okay i'm not getting past this i'm probably not in the mood to read it right now so i figured i should make a video about me finishing some series i'm in the middle of because i want to get back into fantasy books i've been reading a lot of romance books lately which is not normal for me whatsoever so i do think i'm in a fantasy mood right now and so i'm turning this into finishing all the series i'm in the middle of obviously not all of them some of them yeah so the book i want to read is this one six scorched roses by carissa broadbent is part of the crowns of nyaxia series i read book one and book two book one serpent and the wings of night i liked until okay well no it's not that i didn't like the ending it's just couple in that book wasn't my favorite and then the second book i didn't like as much as the first book this is a novella but it's also considered to be book 1.5 it doesn't feature the main couple that was in the may duology I saw this couple in the second book. They were side characters. They're main characters in this book. And I actually really liked them because the girl was like the blunt type and the guy was like, oh, I'm not the type to show my feelings. So I have a feeling I'm gonna really love them. I don't know, I just got in a random mood to read this even though it's just like a random novella and a duology. This isn't exactly gonna be a reading vlog. I'm not exactly comfortable reading with a camera, like just sitting there watching me almost. I tried before, I couldn't do it. It was just like, I kept staring at the camera. It's just like, there was like this, a feeling in me that got uncomfortable so this is as close to a reading vlog as you're gonna get it's kind of late so i might get started on this tomorrow yeah hopefully this gets me out of the mini slump i'm in and yeah see you guys tomorrow okay here we go also i am in the same hoodie as yesterday so no judgment okay i am in an exam week right now and i'm stressing i do not care how i am dressed okay i'm a lot more tired than i thought i was and it's like only early evening so i might take a small nap i'm now on part two i forgot how much I liked Chris of Broadbent's writing. It always felt like there was something happening and she doesn't do like thing some authors do where they information dump in some paragraphs and that's what I've always liked about her writing. So far we have two characters, the main character being Lilith. As I said before, she's like the blunt type but also she can't really tell other people's facial expressions. She likes knowing things about the world, likes learning. Right now in her village, there's like this sickness going around, this disease that's killing a lot of people. So she tries to go to this man named Lord Vale to ask him for his blood because she thinks that'll be the cure to the sickness and so she makes a deal with him yeah that's where we're at right now but anyways yeah i think i'm gonna take a small nap because i'm actually really tired i've been studying all day for my exams so i'll see you guys later okay i just looked back on my other footage and i must have been really tired because i forgot to mention there's vampires in these books most of carissa broadbent's books have vampires in them the serpent in the wings of night that has vampires i believe she has a book called the vampire conqueror so anyways more about the main character lilith she's basically known death all her life she's the child who's destined to die so that's why she's desperately trying to help everyone with this disease or sickness i forget what it was it's just something that spreads this sickness was given to them by a very angry god there are gods in these books which kind of confused me at first because like i said before chris broadbent doesn't have too much information dump dumping in her books which is something i liked but also you learn as you read the book in the beginning it might be kind of confusing when they mention like gods and stuff but yeah i'm on chapter five page 30 so i'm gonna continue reading maybe halfway around like this book is really short so maybe like halfway i'll update you guys again okay i'm not halfway yet but this romance is moving so much faster than i thought it would they're cute sort of veil 
is a lot more expressive than I thought he would be considering what he was like in the second book. <laughs> so Vale has a lot of like old objects in his house, right? Like he's a vampire. He's very old, probably over like maybe 200 years old or something. And he has a lot of like trinkets and stuff in his house. And obviously Lilith likes knowing things and she likes knowledge and stuff. So whenever she goes into his house to get his blood, she kind of just looks around and like stares at things and like wonder and whatever. And that amuses him. And that I find cute because like he just likes looking at her, enjoying herself. But then he's asking if she wants to stay at his house just because it's dark out and it's dangerous at night you know vampires and stuff it's just moving so much faster than i thought it would i mean it's barely 200 pages so i guess i shouldn't have expected much because it's a novella but still this is so much faster than i expected like i'm only on page 50 here and he's already asking oh do you want to stay the night it's gonna be dangerous and i'm just here like my mouth dropped and i'm just like i'm gaping at this book i'm just like i do two already have feelings for each other at page 50 what is this but yeah anyways yeah i'm gonna continue reading to halfway and i'll update you guys when i get to half of the book okay i just got to 50 percent of this book i think i'm getting used to the pacing i did think it was a bit fast at first but obviously novella is shorter so lilith started to like open up to him where he realizes just how dire the situation is for her back home so now he's like helping her out a bit there's also a bit of letter writing in here which i wasn't expecting but i like it a lot more <laughs> than i thought i would for a good portion of this book i thought i was gonna rate it three stars but i'm probably gonna rate it maybe near a four now depending on how the second half goes i am seeing how this connects to the second book of the serpent and the wings of night like there are a bit of references here that if you read the second book you'll know what i'm talking about my impression of veil now is that he's not an emotionless cold man i guess in the second book i can't really judge him only based off of that because that was kind of his role in a way because of his position in like the vampire court or whatever you want to call it yeah honestly this is a lot more cozy read than i was expecting don't quote me on that i haven't read the second half of the book yet so i'm not actually sure if most of it is like a cozy read but that's what it feels like to me although there is still the whole sickness thing going on where she's trying to fight against the clock like it's either she dies before she gets a cure or her sister dies before she gets a cure so there was this one scene in here where she was just talking about her research and everything and she was all excited and then veil is just staring at her and then he's like you're a very beautiful woman and i'm that made me so happy for some reason because just seeing her talk about what she loves doing made him say that out loud it's not like he fell for her because of appearance he fell for her because of what she loves what she likes to do who she is and that just made me so so happy but yeah i think i'm gonna call it a night i believe i'll be able to finish it tomorrow like i got halfway in just like one hour so yeah but i'll see you guys tomorrow have a good night if it's night wherever you are okay i fully lied i continued reading the book after i continued a couple more chapters of the book i take back what i said about the cozy part there was some blood in here like a lot of it there is this character named pharaoh i honestly like him so much i'm always sad that characters like him never get picked to be like the main love interest kind of just have like a wiry frame wiry glasses a sandy blonde hair they just never get picked to be the main love interest and i'm kind of sad about that honestly because i really liked him he is such a good guy too okay it is the next day and i just finished six scorched roses by chrissa broadbent overall i think the rating i'm gonna give it is around a 3.75 out of 5. hi editing me here so that rating has changed i think i changed it to around a 3.25 out of 5. i thought about it a bit more and i'm just like yeah no i wasn't as obsessed with that book as i thought i was so i kind of lowered it it was good it was just i wish it was a bit longer so then we could connect with them a bit more and the romance was a bit slower i did say before the pacing was a bit fast but i i did get used to it it's just i like my romances to be a bit slower and obviously it's a novella it's shorter so yeah i think i'm just gonna give it a 3.75 okay i think i'm gonna read this one it is the last book in julie kagawa's shadow of the fox series i read the second book a while ago so i don't remember too much if i'm being honest from what i can remember the first book was about two main characters one was kind of a i'll just say like a warrior on a mission or something to find a scroll and then a fox spirit a kitsune like she can transform from a girl to a fox except her kitsune form human form also has like the fox ears and tail this warrior and kitsune are traveling together to get to the next temple because the kitsune's temple had previously been attacked because they had kept a scroll that was really rare but the temple had been attacked so in order to keep the scroll safe the kitsune is basically ordered to travel to the next temple and give it to that temple to keep it safe but the thing is the warrior 
character is looking for that scroll, but he doesn't know the kitsune has it. The kitsune kind of tricks him into being like, oh, the scroll is at the next temple because we just sent it there. But in reality, she has it the whole time they're traveling together. There's also like a romantic subplot, obviously, like between the two. Hopefully this will be the second series I finish in today's video. So let's get into it. Okay, here we go. I forgot to mention, but the reason that everyone is after these scrolls, there's three of them in total. You gather all three scrolls and then I guess put them together. You can summon a really dangerous dragon demon sort of thing. The plot of this entire thing, just them trying to stop the dragon from being summoned. I just realized now, but my hair looks crazy. <laughs> I am about 30 pages into the Night of the Dragon, I think. It's going okay. As far as I can remember, I haven't been in love with these books, but the only reason I continued them was because of the romance. I thought the romance was cute. Like nothing all too, I want to say, romancy has happened yet. Like they haven't done anything couple. <laughs> oh my god, words are not working today. Like they haven't held hands or kissed or anything. So that's what I liked about them. Because I am not vlogging myself fully reading, I will give you guys a page flip. There you go. <laughs> Just some different perspective. That's all this is. This is so stupid. <laughs> okay, I know he's kind of pitying himself right now, but he called her a beautiful, naive fox girl. <laughs> I'm just focusing on the beautiful. Oh god, it's, it's like those girls who <laughs> fangirl over Klaus Michelson despite him saying he'd murder Caroline. <laughs> all like, Caroline, you're beautiful, but if you don't shut up, I'll kill you. <laughs> I'm giving off those vibes. Oh god. I've sunk so low because of fiction. This is fiction's fault. I kind of fell asleep earlier so that's why my hair looks slightly crazy as if it doesn't look crazy all the time but they are so cute I forgot how much I like their little moments in these books like it doesn't matter if it's like her giving him a straw hat or something and him just smiling at her I always think they're so cute oh she smiles at him and he gets like this twisting feeling in his stomach <laughs> Damn, I forgot how ominous these books were. Like, listen to this. A body blurry and indistinct was shuffling toward us through the rain. It moved with an awkward, staggering gait, weaving unsteadily on its feet as if it was drunk. As it drew closer and the growling from Chu grew louder, it resolved itself into a woman dressed in a ragged shopkeeper's robe. A pair of scissors clutched in one hand, a smiling white mask covered her face, and she stumbled barefoot through the mud, swaying erratically but still coming right for us. Like, what the hell? They're just staring at this creepy woman creepily holding a pair of scissors as she's coming towards them and they're just staring at her. I would run away. Okay, you know like those easy adventure games you probably played when you were a child? That's what this book kind of feels like to me. Because <laughs> there's a bunch of subplots in this book and it's just like if a town's in danger, they're obviously gonna help. But it's just like they go along with it so easily. Like each character is like, oh, well, we have nothing better to do and we have to go that way anyway. And so they just decide to save these random people. And then once they save these random people, these people give them a favor. That's kind of what's always bothered me about these books. Everything seemed too convenient. Okay guys, I'm taking a break from The Night of the Dragon by Julie Kagawa. I am including The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes in this video. I mean, it is technically part of a series. It's the prequel to The Hunger Games, which I already finished The Hunger Games. I think it counts. Yeah, have not read The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes yet, and I don't have the physical book, so I found this audiobook version that I am going to listen to. I am on a mission to finish it before I watch the movie in two days. Probably shouldn't be doing this when I have my last exam tomorrow, but I've studied enough, I think. So I'm now studying The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I'll continue Night of the Dragon by Julie Kigala later. Yeah, no, I fully did not finish that book. So sorry to those who were actually looking forward for me to finish that, but I literally just put it down and then I never picked it back up in this video. Hopefully I can finish it in the future. But I am seriously on a mission to finish this before I go watch the movie because I want to know Snow's inner monologues or like inner thoughts before I go watch watch Tom Blythe just make me like snow more in the movie. So yeah, I'm just gonna get started. Wish me luck. I am 20 minutes in and this man won't stop going on about his shirt. This man's inner monologue. It's like his whole inner monologue right now for the past 20 minutes has been about his shirt and it's kind of driving me insane. So from what I'm understanding, I'm sorry if I'm getting some of this wrong because I'm not normally good with audiobooks. From what I'm understanding, the Hunger Games were different in the past because the mentors wouldn't get both the guy 
guy and the girl, they would either get the guy or the girl. And in Snow's case, he gets the girl. He gets Lucy Gray. Lucy Gray's introduction was really interesting, actually. I like seeing the parallels between like the clips that have been releasing for the movie and also the trailer with the book. I have a feeling it'll be a lot more interesting when I watch the actual movie. Two hours into the audiobook, there are these characters in the capital, like Sejanus and Tigress, that I think are nice. I know what happens to Tigress later on in the actual Hunger Games. Sejanus brought food to the tributes, but I'm not sure if it's because he's feeling like some sort of pity towards them or like some sort of empathy because he used to be a district person. If I'm understanding that correctly, I think he used to be a district person. I think I remember hearing that. He suggested switching tributes with Snow, but I'm not sure if it's because he genuinely cares or if it's because he has ulterior motives. I kind of have trust issues with everyone in the capital, if you couldn't tell. The fact that she's flirting with him in the worst possible situation she could be in is sad, is cute, and funny to me for some reason. He's just asking her all these personal questions to fill out this form, and she's just flirting with him the whole time. One of the questions on the form asked, are you married? And so he was just like, you married? <laughs> Starts laughing, and then she's like, why are you asking? I think this could work, <laughs> like between him and her. And I don't know why, but I just started laughing, cause like, it's such a grim situation, and yet her personality is like bright and bubbly. I don't know, she's just really sunshiny, which I was half expecting, but also wasn't. It is kind of unsettling reading this from Snow's POV, because you can tell somewhere in the back of his mind, you can tell that he cares for Lucy, but also simultaneously, he's having these thoughts about himself, how he can take advantage of her talents and her popularity to, to somehow get himself to rise in the ranks. So it is kind of unsettling to read that while it's also just this cute little romance story happening right before our eyes. <laughs> okay, I finished the second book of this video. Two series finished. Can't believe it. I think I'm going to give The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes a 3.25 out of 5. It's not that I thought it was bad it was just i don't know by the end of it i felt almost sick in a way not in a bad way where i thought the book was bad it was just maybe it's the fact that i tried to finish this so quickly because i'm watching the movie tomorrow but i don't know this book gave me like this sick but entertained feeling yeah i think a 3.25 out of 5 is a good score for this one okay changing plans pause on life pause on everything pause on i don't know we are taking a break from what was i even reading before the night of the dragon by julie kagawa could not get into that book right now so i decided to switch to another one that was a while ago uh, in between i think i read like maybe three other books started the percy jackson series not gonna include it in this video obviously on december 26th a very important date by the way the second book in a very very famous duology came out ruthless vows by rebecca ross oh <laughs> i just hit my glasses ruthless vows by rebecca ross got it in store december 27th i was very afraid it was gonna be sold out in one day not really sure how possible that is but i know it's possible since it is rebecca ross divine rival I think I sort of like a third of the way through almost halfway things have gotten crazy i forgot to update you you guys when i b first began the book because honestly i forgot i was filming this video in the first place until i saw like a mini folder on my laptop and i was like oh i should probably continue that video if you guys have read divine rivals you know how it ends the craziest cliffhanger ever when i was buying this book i was literally talking to like cashier person sorry i forget what they're called but and she was like is this book for you when i was getting this and i was like yes and she's like is it true that divine rivals ends on a cliffhanger and i'm just like yes but it's very good please read it and this one is just as crazy if you know what happens at the end of divine rivals you'll know what i mean when i say i can imagine roman and iris falling in love all over again in the second book that might be minor spoilers right there but not entirely so please go read divine rivals if you haven't because it's so so good things have gone so crazy i just got to a crazy part my dodge drop i wasn't expecting it to happen this way if you guys know iris goes to get like a tire iron whatever and she has to go searching all over this town goes into multiple houses feels the earth quaking then i don't know she just goes with her senses goes upstairs stays there and then you guys know what happens if you've already read this i'm speechless i don't know what's gonna happen because i paused right there i'm just like oh my god i'm so scared to read the next chapter because what if it's not as great as i think it's gonna be but yeah i don't know i don't want to give too many updates on this one because i know it just came out and people are gonna be angry with me if i give them like major spoilers on this by accident so i think i'm just gonna peacefully read this update you guys when i get to the end and then i think i'm gonna read one final book for this video after this one and it's one i've been scared to read for like oh when did it come out november or something it's been one i've been scared to 
read for over a month now. So yeah, hopefully this video can end off on a good note. I forgot to say, I did finish Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross like a while ago, actually. I read three other books since then. And what was the rating I gave it? I gave it a four out of five. I, I sadly didn't like it as much as the first book. I thought I would, but then near the ending, I don't know, it was such a cliche fantasy ending that I'm just like, it was kind of underwhelming. At the same time, you kind of expect it with fantasy at this point. On the other hand, with Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross, I loved it. I hadn't read something like that in like a really long time and I ended up falling in love with it. So to have the second book be kind of disappointing or say it's disappointing is kind of an understatement, but I still enjoyed it to some degree. So I gave it a four out of five. And I know I said it's been a while since I read Ruthless Vows. I took such a long break from this video, but I'm gonna take another long break until I read my final book. Haha, <laughs> joke's on me. I never get to that final book of this video because I am currently reading This Time It's Real by Anne Liang and that's obviously not part of a series or in the middle of a series. So I'm gonna take a break from this video and I'll see you guys another day. And with that, we are ending off this video on terrible camera quality. So sorry. I wanted to end this kind of quickly because I've been editing this video for quite a while actually. This used to be like a lot longer. So I'm surprised that I cut it down this short, but this is the end of the video. Yeah, sorry. I actually never got to that final book, which was supposed to be Defiant by Brandon Sanderson. I believe I said at the beginning of the video too. Don't feel like reading that book. Don't feel like reading it anytime soon, but hopefully I can get to it this year. I'm gonna end it off here. Hope you guys enjoyed and hope to see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>